Hello everyone, Dalek here, and it's time for part 2 of Dark Souls Easy Mode. Now the last time I left you space cowboys, we had just rung the first bell of the undead, and today we're going to ring the second one. Now the first thing we need to do is head on up down the shortcut through the aqueduct to the Capra Demon. Most playthroughs in a minimal hassle style would skip the Capra Demon because you only need him to unlock the depths and um, there's no actual reason to go through the depths. We are going down there because we are going to be using common weapons the Boulder Side Sword and the Light Crossbow for this playthrough and for that we are going to need the Large Ember we are also going to be using very probably the Power Within Pyromancy found at the top of Blight Town and for that we are going to need a Pyromancy Flame now Capra is legendarily one of the most awful awful bosses in the game it's not particularly tasty in terms of stats but it starts off your fight by jumping straight in on you and if that doesn't kill you there are two dogs that will come and hem you in so you need to get around it you need to avoid the dogs and you need to get up the stairs to safety very very quickly or you will die this is where the eagle shield from blight town is really going to come into its own And here he is, straight away. And we've done it. Always helps to go around the right of him, I find. Because otherwise, if you go around the left, the dogs will run to the left. And you'll be cut off from the stairs. Now, I'm now standing on a little archway at the top. Um, the dogs will follow you in orderly fashion up here. And you'll be able to stab them easily. Capra cannot touch you on this ledge, except by doing his jumping slash. And eventually that's going to make him fall off. Down he goes. Oh no, he's still there. Down he goes. And now we can switch to the crossbow and fire arrows into his heads and make top and make castanets out of his testiclates. You can see that the uh, light crossbow plus five really is doing pretty respectable boss damage, even though using I'm using only uh, standard bolts. Again, cannot stress the importance of a good stability shield enough here, if you're going to be doing it this way instead of by going toe to toe with him. He's stuck in a loop now. And that's all she wrote. Moving on, back at Firelink, our next task is to head up to Ye Depths and blag us some upgrading materials. I uh, used the Homewood Miracle, I think, here. That's the reason I put 18 Faith on this character, so that I could teleport back to the bonfire whenever I like. The Undead Hag, by the way, who lives at the end of this aqueduct, sells some quite useful items. She sells a lot of poison curative stuff. I think she's the only place in the game that will sell blooming moss clumps which are the only way to remove toxic and I'm pretty sure she's the only place that sells transient curses which are vital for Anor uh, which are vital for new Londo rather and also purging stones which get rid of curses if you make your way all the well make your way all the way down to the second part of the depths and get cursed by a basilisk then you are really going to know about it at this level so, down the depths we go. 
I had to have a few runs at doing this bit because playing this on a capture card really couldn't see shit. So yeah, down the steps, swing around to the right, take care of the first hollow. The next hollows will close in on you immediately. It is ridiculously easy to die in this bit, no matter how good at souls you are. Because there are just so many of the fuckers and they... If you, if you let your guard down at the wrong time, they will combo you into the dust with all speed. And again, this is where a crossbow is really handy. We're going to sit at the top here and pick a couple of them off. Advance very slowly. There's a lot of them hiding behind pillars, and if you set several of them off at the same time, you're going to die. One behind there? Yep, of course there is. Fear the power of the Baldur's Swag Sword. Now we're going down here. Going to be two dogs. One of them stationary and one of them up our ass straight away. Now, if you make your way in carefully, the first butcher is behind that table you can see on the right there. So we are going to avoid aggroing him. Oh, dog's gone for some reason. We're going to aggro him instead. Then we're going to try and draw him off. He is very deadly, but he has terrible recovery frames. So as long as you can keep out of the way of his blows, especially with a device which closes distance as adeptly as the swag sword, you can handle him as easily as that. Now, chest here. Large ember. That's what we need to take our common weapons up to plus 10. Now the next thing we need to do is hop down one of these archways on the side, if I can just find one. Sorry about this, it is very, very dark with a capture card. I've really got to use this program to figure out how to speed video up. That's the way we came in. Oh, of course, we do need to go. Do we need to go up there? There, we do. I was looking in the wrong place. So... You drop down into this little area, and immediately a butcher is going to jump down on us. This is the last of the butchers. Just make sure you don't get your back to the wall again. Got a little bit greedy there. Estus, motherfucker, do you drink it? I swore I wasn't going to say that in this playthrough. Yeah, yeah, Laurentius, I can see you. I happen to have my own stuff going on over here, and it is pretty big stuff. And I've got the sack. Where's my sack? There it is. And now we are wearing the armour of a true warrior. If I can just find Laurentius. There he is. Now he's now going back to Firelink. And that's where we're now going to teleport back to. Now, part three, we're going to go down, I'm going to show you how to use the shortcut to Blight Town. Now, this bit is actually filmed out of order because the first time I recorded this, it didn't record properly. If I were doing this in order, I would have just seen Knight Lautrec 
squatting at the bonfire, uh, but below the bonfire there. You can kill him there, and you can prevent the firekeeper from being murdered. If you kill him there, you will get the ring of favor and protection. However, you won't get his armor set, which is quite nice, and you won't get uh, you won't get the opportunity to decide whether you want to revive Anastasia or whether you want to keep her soul for yourself. And Firekeeper Souls is what powers up our healing ability. So yeah, down to New Londo, a quick right into the Valley of Drakes, across that little plank, and bingo, we're into Blight Town. If you use this instead of going through Blight Town legitimately via the depths, it will probably save you about 20 years of 20 years, 20 hours of your life. It only feels like 20 years with the frame rate. Run past these bods, they're nasty. Hit very hard and do poison. Into Blight Town. We can jump down on the right here if we're doing an uber speed run, but it's a really good way to get yourself killed. So we're just going to go down all the ladders. All the ladders. This a uh, shortcut is where you find the sealer's armor um, dropped by one of the three sealers of New Londo. I th it's implied by the plot that they came down here to try and clean the poison out of Bright Blight Town. So, whether you get the armor or not, say a prayer for those poor fuckers, because a lot of blood pressure problems would have been resolved if they'd been been able to clean the poison out of Blight Town. Thing, one thing people don't realise about this on first playthrough is this is not actually an underground level. If you look up, you can see the sky. Okay, you can hear the elevator now. To the... Oh, we're going to kill... Are we going to kill this guy? No, we're not. We're going to go down here. There's the elevator. It looks like a water wheel. So we jump down onto there. We ride the water wheel-like contraption until we can see a platform and we hop off and that's it that's blight town beaten in around a minute oh there's shiva of the east uh he's an interesting guy he's there because i joined the uh forest hunters covenant while i in between videos We've already kindled this bonfire to plus 10. Um, revive to human here. And run around out here until... Um, until Maneater Mildred attacks you. If you want to have an NPC in this battle to draw a fire from you. It's perfectly legitimate to do it solo. In fact, it's more legitimate. We'll give her more hit points, but hey... Your funeral. We're hanging. We're, we're hooking round to the right, so that we don't aggro the giants. With the hit points that you have at the moment, if one of the giants chucks a boulder at you, then it's quite likely to be good night, ladies. Yeah, I think that was one of them being thrown just there. And we're down to Quelag's Domain, and this is the start of the Witch of Isolith themed levels. Technically, Blight Town is the start of the Witch of Isolith themed levels because her sister lives there. There's Manny to Mildred's summon sign, which we got as a reward for killing her, which sadly you didn't see because, again, uh, my first, my first Blight Town shortcut run through didn't actually record. Hey, look at us. It's like we're cosplaying as each other. Obviously, my bottom is prettier. There's the power within. And there's magic weapon. That'll give us like an extra 30-40% damage. Now, first thing to do is lock onto Quaylag and circle to the left. The left is her 
her blind spot, if you like. Um, particularly if you run under, run or roll under the legs. What you really, really must look out for is her long stab, her jumping spit, and her area effect. There, if she's crouching like that, she's going to mess you up. I have failed to notice. Oh no, she's doing a spit. There, now she's crouching. And I have failed to notice this and gained an object lesson in why it's a bad idea to record Dark Souls playthroughs when you're about eight months out of practice. Right, take two. Hildred is summoned again and we are going to back the fuck off a little bit. Right, there's the spit. That's given us sufficient distance, and we're going to ping some shit at her with the light crossbow plus five. All we need to do is keep in mind where the lava is and keep out of range of her. And hopefully, Mildred will keep her distracted. There's the AOE. Give her a quick stab at the bum, I think. Why not? Why the hell not? If you're offered to put it in their bum, and you don't, then you'll regret it later. Maybe when you're 60 years old. Maybe tomorrow. But you'll regret it. Especially when somebody is with it, when it's as bum as fine as Quailax. It sometimes makes me think of Queen Slugfrabat from Earthworm Jim, only more Queen Fire Breathing Eight Legged Vagina Dentata for a butt. Hmm, yeah. From software I've got some fuck some issues. No, no, I'm in the lava. I'm in the lava. This is not ideal. Round the back, round the back. Come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Why am I cheering myself on? I know exactly what happens. And um, yeah, I knew that was going to happen as well, but it still made me wince. Uh, that's brought us down to two Estus. Uh, but she, this this fight needs to end. This this needs to stop being a thing that I am reliving. Um, good life advice there. If you see, we can roll under that leg there. The oh, area effect it is a very good way to get out of her sword attacks. Those sword attacks are intimidating as all shit the first couple of times you do it. You just have to realise that they are in fact really easy to avoid. And there we go. Go, nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. Come on, come on, boy. You can do it. You can do it. Is that it? Come on, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's some nice shooting there, boy. Right, while my on-screen self fumbles around looking for the next area, I'm just going to mention that before you leave Blight Town, you should pick up a couple of large titanite shards. They are lying around, there's at least two of them lying around in the swamp. You can also farm them if for some reason you've lost control of your bladder and want to, want to hang around Blight Town longer than you have to. You can farm them from the giant leeches, which hang out in the swamp. You must, must get as many titan, large titanite shards as common weapons you intend to use in the next section. Because once you get up to Analondo, just going to ring the bell there, once you get up to Analondo, you will be able to uh, upgrade your weapons to plus 10. 
but only Andre down in the parish can upgrade them from 5 to 6. Once they're at 6, anyone can upgrade them to 10, but only Andre, Andre can make that leap for you from plus 5 to plus 6. And if you get all the way to the top of Analondo and realise that you've got to run all the way back down to the bottom of the parish again, you are going to fucking freak. And thus, the world's most expensive and unnecessarily complex alarm clock kicks into life. And we're going to Sen's Fortress! Oh, joy! Now we've got one more thing to do before we leave, and that's to go and show you where... Quelag's sister lives. Quelag's sister, the woman who tried to drink all the pus from Blight Town. There's the door that leads to Lost Isolith, where Quelag's mum lives. Stab this wall, and through we go. That's Aengi, by the way. Annoying little shit, but he sells good pyromancies. It's the only place to get the toxic cloud pyromancy or Toxic Mist, or whatever it's called. It's heavily implied that he's the one that actually poisoned Blight Town. Pyromancy experiment gone wrong, I think. And there she is, there's my fair lady. Hey girl! Damn, you looking fine. You can't actually talk to her unless you chose the witch's ring as your starting gift. Um, she's in constant agony as a result of her attempt to drink all the blight town poison, all the blight pus. So, either bung her some humanity to alleviate her physical suffering, or put a sword through her temple and put that bitch out of her misery. And. We'll be back next time with Sen's Fortress and Anna Londo. Yeah, yeah, I can't fucking wait. <laughs>